assalamu alaikum welcome to the new class so in this class we are going to discuss about a new topic that is thyristor controlled voltage regulators and thyristor controlled phase angle regulators before going to the actual topic we will first discuss about the voltage and phase angle regulators which are not based on thyristors which may be some conventional techniques uh, in uh, in this we are using some conventional techniques to do to control the voltage directly and phase angle and sometimes we can control voltage only sometimes we can control phase angle only sometimes we can control both voltage as a well, phase angle the basic concept of the voltage and phase angle regulation is the addition of an appropriate in phase or a quadrature component of the prevailing terminal bus voltage in order to change that is decrease or increase its magnitude or angle to a specified or a desired value so we are actually inserting uh, a voltage in between the transmission line that can be added in phase with the sending and voltage so that the sending and voltage will be modified to a new voltage which can be increased voltage decreased voltage uh, in phase with the actual sending and voltage or it may be having some phase angle difference with the actual sending and voltage so if that is the case we can vary voltage as well as phase angle that the voltage regulation could theoretically be achieved by a synchronous in phase voltage source with controllable amplitude that is we can increase for plus delta v or decrease for minus delta v in series with the ac system and regulated and regulated terminal that means at where we want to uh, uh, change or regulate the voltage as illustrated in the figure you can see over here let us see we have the sending end over here we have some voltage source inserted in series with the transmission line and we have some other point that is a point which is to the left of the right of the sending end now this voltage will be equal to this let's say sending end voltage plus this voltage the voltage provided by this voltage source so if it is uh, since here we have shown angle zero that means this voltage and this voltage will be in phase so when they are using plus it will be added let's say this is the actual voltage when the plus delta v is used it will be increased in this direction when the minus delta v is used it will be decreased in this direction so this is how the voltage can be inserted in series and the total magnitude of the voltage can be changed a commonly used implementation of this concept is shown in figure b please try to understand this let's say this is phase a this is phase b and this is phase c this is a three phase auto transform which is usually connected in star now this limb of the uh, auto transform is connected to phase A and its output tapping, its output you can see is connected again in series with the phase A or we can see it is a primary of the transform, it is secondary is connected in series with the phase A. This voltage will induce a voltage which will be in phase with A. So total voltage of this will be modified by this voltage but this voltage will be in phase uh, to this phase A voltage because this voltage has been taken from the voltage sorry phase A similarly for phase B and for phase C so it is quite illustrated in the phasor diagram here this is VA that is this VA this VA regulated will be equal to this VA plus delta VA that is delta VA here since it is the output of this uh, outer transformer and outer transformer has taken the output of the auto, uh, auto transformer in this particular point has been taken from the phase A itself. So this delta VA will be in phase with this phase VA. So total voltage will be VA plus delta VA. Again, this will also be in phase with VA. So we can say here the voltage is controlled. Uh, here the magnitude of the voltage is only controlled here. The phase angle is not controlled. Phase angle is as it is similarly for phase b similarly for phase c an adjustable voltage is provided by means of a tap changer from the three phase auto transformer as i have discussed just now uh, it is usually referred to as a regulating transformer or excitation transformer for the primary of series uh, insertion transformer now the primary of the insertion transformer is connected to this auto transformer which injects uh, injects to it and achieve the required voltage regulation it injects the required voltage in series with the line and we can get the 
desired voltage regulation. From the arrangement shown, it is evident that the injected voltage delta VA, delta VB, and delta VC are in phase with the line to neutral voltage VA, VB, and VC respectively, as can be seen from the phase diagram that is this phase diagram. So, this is how we can say such type of regulators are known as voltage regulators where only in phase voltage have been changed. They are not called the phase angle regulators. Now, in a similar manner, arrangements of the above figure can be used for the phase angle control simply by stipulating the injected voltage to have a phase of plus minus 90 de degree uh, relative to the system voltage V. Now, in the previous case, we actually injected the voltage which were in phase with the actual voltage, but here we want to inject the voltage which are in quadrature with the voltage, which can be having a phase angle relationship of plus 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees. Now, such a condition has been shown here for here. This is the same as that of this. Here you can see delta V plus minus plus minus delta V at an angle of zero, but here it is plus minus delta V at an angle of 90 degrees. For example, this can be taken as minus delta V because here I will let you know after some time why I am considering this to be minus, minus delta V. Let us say this will be plus delta V. So when this is the case, uh, this is having an angle of 90 degree with respect to this V and this will be now effective voltage now. This will be the regulated voltage for the other case when we use the uh, plus delta V. So this arrangement has been taken, has been made by this type of the arrangement. With this stipulation, the injective voltage will change the prevailing phase angle of the system voltage. We can have phase angle change. You can see from here to here there is some phase change and also magnitude will also be changed if this voltage phaser will have a good amount of, uh, we can say magnitude. If the magnitude is very small, we can say this may be uh, this may be approximately equal to this. A possible arrangement for the phase angle control is shown sch schematically in figure 2b with the corresponding figure phase diagram in 2c. Please try to understand this. This is a delta connected system. We can see it is a type of a transformer, again an auto transformer. So in this case, the delta is connected like this and here the phase A is connected, here phase C is connected, here phase B is connected, okay. The output is taken from, now these two windings are very important, you need to understand them. Electrically they are connected to phase A but magnetically, you can see magnetic axis is coincident with the magnetic axis of phase B, C. That is the voltage across this winding will be, will be appearing across this winding. Actually, in practice, this winding will be connected across the limb across which this winding is connected so that they share the same magnetic axis. In that case, you will see that the magnetic flux produced by the voltage BC will be also shared by this. So when this happens, that means we can say that voltage BC will appear across this. And that happens. Now, this voltage will be definitely equal to VA plus minus delta VA. Now we have to define how this delta VA will inject a voltage which is in quadrature with respect to this VA. Now since this voltage is in phase with BBC, this is phase B and this is phase C. You can see now this is phase B, this is phase C where VBC will be equal to VB minus VC. When you take this to this side, it will be VB minus VC in this side. And when you take their uh, resultant, that will be this. You will see that the resultant phase, that is VBC, will be lagging to this voltage A by 90 degrees. So, if this is taken from here, let us say it will be minus 90 degrees. And for this case, it will be plus 90 degrees. So, in that case, uh, in that case, this voltage can be added on from here. If this is minus, that means it will be uh, again this will be minus 90 degrees it will be plus 9 it will be lagging to this voltage by 90 degrees if it is used let us say for this this point and if it is taken at this point it will be plus 90 degrees so here important thing is that this voltage will be injected which will be having a quadrature uh, nature with respect to this va now va plus delta va will be equal to va plus delta va this will be the magnitude 
new magnitude of the voltage so if this delta v is having a good amount of magnitude this this will be have this will be very quite large as compared to this by using the pythagoras so we can calculate it if we if this magnitude is very small in that case we can approximate this value to be equal to this value but there will be some angle difference so similarly for vb delta vb will be having a voltage phasor which will be in quadrature with vb but vb you can see this is vb uh, vb plus delta vb here this voltage that is ac will be injected in series with this that means this voltage will be equal to vb let's say plus delta v ac this is a this is c in this direction and you will see that uh, this ac uh, vac will be in this direction which will be perpendicular to this similarly you can calculate this voltage vc and delta vc delta vc we are taken from here that means it will be a and b so with this arrangement we can inject in a cordage or a voltage which is having a plus minus 90 degree phase angle with respect to the previous voltage for relatively small uh, angular adjustment the resultant angular change is approximately, approximately proportional to the injected voltage so you know that is actually you can say it is taken from sine delta where delta is equal to one that means sine delta is equal to delta so you will see that uh, this sine delta will be equal to perpendicular divided by this hypotenuse or sine delta is equal to this delta when is when this is taken as one per unit you will see that this delta will be proportional to this value this v sigma but the case is that delta should be very small or this injected voltage should be very small and in that case you will see that while the voltage magnitude remains almost constant because sigma is very small this v sigma will be very small that is the injected voltage which is sometimes denoted by v sigma or delta v a however for a large angular adjustment the magnitude of the system voltage will appreciably increase you will see that this hypotenuse will have a higher value as compared to this v a so in that case that type of transformer or that type of uh, um, that type of arrangement is known as quadrature booster transform quadrature means it injects an in uh, this voltage which, which is having a phase angle of 90 degree plus or minus booster means it increases the voltage to a good amount and transformer because of this transformer action from this to this the voltage magnitude could be maintained independent of the angular adjustment by a more complex winding arrangement in that case you will see that this is not uh, in that case if we increase or inject the voltage slightly uh, having an angular uh, phase difference between this and this slightly less than 90 degrees you will see that this will not be the hypotenuse of this this will be slightly less than the hypotenuse so we have to adjust this angle in such a way so that this is equal to this so that results in actually a more complex arrangement nevertheless because of it is Related to simplicity because this qubit is very simple. This qubit arrangement has typically been used in conventional phase shifting applications. So it is used in phase shifting applications where this phase sigma injected is very small, so that the effect or modified this this will be approximately considered to be same as that of this, but angle can be. But if we need more, uh, that is increase the amount of angle. In that case, we may be helpless that this voltage may also be increased. Now we'll now uh, see how the power will flow, how the power flow control will be done by the phasing regulators. And as I you told you, the phasing regulators are those where only the phase angle is changed without changing the magnitude of the voltage. So you will see that that may be the this arrangement which we have just described that is the complex arrangement. In that case, this voltage phase that is injected. Uh, uh, with respect to this slightly less than 90 degrees so that this voltage phasor and this voltage phasor will be same but phase angle will be changed as we know optimal loading of transmission lines in practical power system cannot always be achieved at the prevailing transmission angle because sometimes optimal loading may be uh, uh, may be done which may have the power angle let us say greater than 90 degrees in that case the system may not be stable so we need to look for other 
uh, alternatives. Such cases would occur, for example, when power between the two buses is transmitted over a parallel lines of different electrical length or when two buses are inserted whose prevailing angle difference is insufficient to establish the desired power flow. So desired power flow demands that the, this uh, electrical angle may be greater than 90 degrees. So in that case, we may not be able to uh, uh, this transmit the power. So in those cases, we need the phase angle regulator. The basic concept of the power flow controlled by the angle regulation as illustrated in figure 3a, that is this. We again do the same thing that we have sending in voltage. We inserted a voltage regulator or a voltage uh, source in series with Vs or uh, in series with Vs. And definitely Vs effect will be the output of the summation of these two voltages. So this V sigma will be inserted or injected in such a way so that this Vs effect will be equal to this Vs. So you can see from here, here this V sigma is injected. This is the actual Vs, this is the actual Vr. So let us say this is V sigma minus. I will let you know just now why this is minus. This V sigma is injected in such a way so that this Vs effect is equal to Vs. This angle, that is the angle between this Vs and V sigma will be definitely less than 90 degrees. So we'll discuss also this and we'll calculate this angle also, but not now. We'll do this in the coming classes. Now it is represented in terms of the <coughs> usual two machine model in which the phasing regular is inserted between the sending and generator and the transmission line. You can see it is connected between this transmission line and sending and generator so that this Vs effective will be different from this Vs having only a change in phase angle, not the voltage magnitude. Theoretically, the phase angle regulator can be considered as sinusoidal fundamental frequency AC voltage source, as I have told you, with controllable amplitude and phase angle. We can have the controllable amplitude, but here we want that amplitude should be remain, the, remain constant. Thus, the effective controllable amplitude should be only having uh, that is the phase angle regulator should have a controllable magnitude. Thus, the effective voltage uh, and voltage, the effective sending and voltage that is Vs effective becomes the sum of prevailing sending and bus voltage Vs and the voltage sigma provided by the phase angle regulator as illustrated in the phase diagram. Now, this Vs effective will be equal to Vs plus V sigma. As I have told you, this will be Vs. As we insert the voltage phasor V sigma in this direction, this will be now V sigma, Vs effective. So the delta that is earlier delta was between Vr and Vs, that was this delta. Now you will see that the angle between Vs effective, this and this will be equal to sigma minus delta, sorry, delta minus sigma. It is with reference to this, we are uh, declaring them or we are giving them the name minus V sigma so that this is injected in such a way so that the total angle has decreased. That's why here it is given as minus sigma, that is angle will be delta minus sigma. You can see now when this is the uh, delta minus sigma will be the angle, you can see this will be Vx, that is the voltage across this reactance. It will be also known as Vx minus sigma because in this case delta is decreased. And this will also be known as Vs, Vs effect to minus sigma. Now, if the same uh, voltage phasor is injected in this manner, so this will be Vs effective. You can see this angle will be now delta plus sigma. Now, this delta has increased by an amount of sigma. So that's why this Vs effective is known as uh, Vs effective plus sigma. This sigma is V sigma is known as plus V sigma. Again, this voltage phasor that is the voltage across this reactance of the transmission line is known as Vx minus sigma. So the actual voltage phasor without this phase angle is known as Vx sigma is equal to zero. So this is how the phasor diagram will look like when we introduce the, this phase angle regulator in between the sending end and the transmission line. One more thing that when this is the case, let us say this was the phase angle regulator we'll discuss this after after a while for an ideal phase angle regulator the angle of phase uh, v sigma is related to uh, related to vs is stipulated to vary the sigma so that the angle change does not result in the magnitude change that i have just described that means vs effective will be definitely the phasor sum of vs and v sigma 
so magnitude of vs will be same as magnitude of vs effect 2 definitely they will have the change of or they will have a different angle so vs effect 2 that is the magnitude will be equal to vs will be equal to v so when this is the case and this is the case that means now we have we don't know we have only vs effect 2 we have vr their angle will be equal to let us say this plus minus uh, delta plus minus sigma and we have in between a reactance x that means power will be equal to v square by x sine of delta plus minus sigma rest will be same so in this case you will see this was actually the curve which was without the phase angle regulation and now this will be the curve which will be for uh, in presence of the phase angle regulator because it will be it will be the uh, we can say uh, overlap of the these three curves you can see this actual this curve will be for v square by x sine of delta minus uh, sigma this curve and this curve will be for this curve this curve will be for v square by x sine of delta plus sigma now this when this happens when this is inserted in in the uh, this in the system that means series or in between the sending and the transmission line let us say we have a delta minus sigma we'll be having this type of the curve that is this from here to here that means from here to here when we reach the pi we change the curve from this to this we actually we can say we actually trigger the phase angle regulator at this point from here to here we are only using vs we are not using phase angle regulator from this point when the power transfer reach at this point we are changing this that means vs we are changing or we are inserting this phase angle regulator into the system so that this curve change from this to this it remains this so we can say approximately it follows this curve like this and this now the basic idea behind the independent angle regulation is to keep the transmitted power at desired level as i have told independent of the prevailing transmission angle delta as i have told you from here to here it is dependent upon the delta when it reaches the maximum we can insert the phasing regular this curve changes from this curve to this curve so approximately we can take the variation will be like this or if the if this sigma is very close to this this curve may be very close to this so in that case when the close sigma has been changed that means if we have minus sigma from here there will be a curve like this there will be a curve like this another greater sigma a greater sigma there will be a curve like this that's why here it is shown a straight line because these sigma that increase in this uh, sigma may be slightly less so in that case you will see that we have a straight line so this remains uh, same irrespective of the delta even if delta change this can remain the same by inserting the variable we can say uh, this variable magnitude of the v sigma so in that case variable sigma can also change thus for example the power can be kept at a peak after angle delta exceeds pi by 2 that peak power angle by controlling the amplitude of the quadrature voltage v sigma so that the effective phase angle that is delta minus sigma between the sending and the receiving end cities at pi by 2 that's what i will just told you that means for example when it reach at this point which we are we are inserting some voltage phasor which may have a small magnitude in that case the curve will be shifting like this and at that point it will be occurring at this point similarly if still power and delta increases we can change we can insert another or we can increase the magnitude of this v sigma the curve will be at this point let us see and similarly if still delta increases we can change to this point so that if delta increases it remains at the maximum power level because for after pi by 2 well delta delta increases the real power will decrease the real power will but in this case the real power remains the constant in this way the actual transmitted power may be increased significantly even though the phase angle regulator does not increase the steady state power transmission limit. With the phase angle control arrangement stipulated by the stipulated by the above equation, the effective phase angle between the sending end and the receiving end becomes delta minus sigma, as I have told you for this case, and for this case, it will be the delta will be now uh, delta minus sigma. 
and we have two voltage sources that is vs effect 2 so vr and this vs effect 2 will be equal to v so this will, will be p will be equal to vs effect 2 into vr divided by x sine of delta minus sigma plus minus sigma for this case it will be minus sigma the reactive power demand at the end so the line can be simply expressed for p will be equal to v square by x sine of delta minus sigma q will be equal to v square by x one minus cos of delta minus sigma so here only there will be only difference of sigma now the relationship between real power and the angle delta and sigma are plotted in figure 3c that's here this is figure 3 it can be observed that although the phasing does, does not increase the transmitted power of the uncompensated line it makes theoretically possible to keep the power at maximum value at any angle delta in the range of pi by 2 less than delta less than pi by 2 plus sigma so up to pi by 2 to pi by 2 plus sigma the maximum power remains the same it will not change in effect shifting the p curve delta uh, p versus delta curve to the right so here what we are doing we are effectively uh, changing or we are effectively uh, shifting the p delta curve towards the right it should be noted that p versus delta curve can also be shifted towards the left by inserting the voltage of voltage of the angle regulator with an opposite polarity that is this one in this way the power transfer can be increased and maximum power reached at the generator angle less than pi by 2 so that is delta will be equal to pi by 2 minus sigma in that case you will see that the power remain constant for this amount of uh, delta or angle it can also be observed that the relationship between real power and reactive power remains the same as that of the uncompensated system with an equivalent transmission angle so the relationship will remain the same but we have to see the only the transmission angle if the angle of the phasor V sigma related to phasor V s is stipulated to be fixed at plus minus 90 and we have uh, seen it already the phase angle regulator becomes the quadrature booster so in that case if this is if this V sigma is perpendicular to this in this way so this V s effect will be greater than V s by the hypotenuse and the base uh, relation so in that case it becomes a quadrature booster transformer so relationship will be then vs is equal to vs effect will be the phasor sum of vs and v sigma so magnitude of vs effect will be equal to magnitude of vs effect that is v square plus v sigma square where v is the magnitude of vs so this is the phase diagram when we are using a quadrature type of the voltage that is this so in that case since vs effect is greater than vs so the voltage is the p delta curve will be like this this is the p delta curve when v sigma is zero that means there will be no this v sigma and in that case this p a will be equal to v square by x sine of delta plus this v sigma by v cos of delta this will be the relationship of the uh, real power when quadrature uh, when insertion of the voltage will be quadrature to this so we'll derive this in a short short a while ago so this will be v square by x sine of delta v sigma there will be an increase in uh, this power apart from the uncompensated power you can see that this is for and this is derived for plus sigma this is actually derived for plus sigma plus sigma means when the voltage phasor is actually inserted in this manner so the delta for this case will be equal to delta plus sigma so this is actually derived for that case so when the, that uh, when this is the case v, v sigma will be plus that means all the curves when we uh, give the v sigma the plus value that is plus 1 1.06.33 the curve will be shifted towards the left but their peak will increase because now you will see that vs effect has increased as compared to vs so this curve will be now for uh, this uh, v sigma is equal to 0 0.33 you can see that peak has increased as computer and composite line this will be 0 0.66 peak has again increased this is for one similarly for this v sigma is equal to minus one v sigma is equal to minus 0 0.66 definitely they will be in point values this is v sigma will be equal to minus 0 0.33 for minus value they will be shifted towards the right so this is the p delta curve for the we can see when phasing regulator acts as a quadrature boost power we can see when phasing regulator 
also acts as a voltage regulator. For a quadrature booster type of single regulator power, uh, this power transmitted can be expressed as this as I have just told you. Now let us try to have a derivation of this because I don't want you to keep just uh, only remember they will derive it. This is VR, this is VS, we are in, inserting this V sigma so that this delta will be increased by an amount of sigma. So th this will be equal to delta plus sigma, this angle will be equal to sigma. So this is VS effect. So from this, you can simply say that this VR will be equal to VS effect to plus, sorry, VS effect will be equal to VR plus GIX. So that's what I have written over here. VS effect but definitely it will have some angle. I have written it in the complex form, not the phasor form. VS effect to, uh, sorry, polar form. VS effect to at an angle of delta plus sigma will be equal to VR at an angle of zero because we are taking this to be reference plus J I into X. Okay. So I will be equal to VS effect to delta plus sigma minus VR divided by J into X. So taking j to the numerator it will be taken as an angle of minus 90 degrees so v is effect by x delta plus sigma minus 90 degrees minus vr by x minus 90 degrees okay now i star will be equal to v is effect by x uh, this we are taking the negative of all this angle that will be equal to 90 minus delta minus sigma minus vr by x at an angle of 90 we are taking the minus of this angle so s will be equal to v s effect to at an angle of delta plus sigma into i star that is the complex power at the v s effect to it will be equal to when you multiply this v s effect to this it will be equal to v s effect to square divided by x uh, multiplying two uh, complex numbers in the polar form will be in that case we have to multiply the magnitude and angles will be added you will say these two will be cancelled it will be equal to only angle of 90 degrees similarly for this case we equal to v s effect to vr divided by x into angle of 90 plus delta plus sigma now p will be definitely real part of it its real part will be uh, the cost component of this that is minus v vr vs effect by x cos of 90 plus delta plus sigma so this will be its uh, real counterpart so cos of 90 plus theta will be equal to minus sine minus and minus will be consumed will be equal to vs effect vr by x sine of delta plus sigma so expanding this will be equal to sine sigma cos delta plus uh, sine delta cos sigma so taking vs effect to inside will be equal to vs effect to sine sigma cos of delta vs effect to cos of sigma sine of delta now from this phase diagram you can see that vs effect to sine delta will sine sigma will be equal to v sigma vs effect to cos of sigma will be equal to vx sorry vs so i have written them in here vs effect to sine sigma equal to v sigma vs effect to cos of sigma will be equal to vs so it will be equal to vr vr v sigma by x cos of delta plus vr vs vr by x sine of delta so since we know that vs is equal to vr is equal to v so this will be equal to v square by x sine of delta i have written it first and this will be equal to v into v sigma by x v into v sigma by x cos of delta taking this v square comma it will be equal to v square by x sine of delta when v has been taken uh, out x has been taken out and when v has taken now we have to divide v that v square v sigma by v cos of delta that is the result we have just taken so this was the derivation of the real power and this is the we can say uh, we can say p delta curve for different values of v sigma i have just described you all these values it can be although that the maximum transmitted power increases with the injected voltage v sigma maximum power has increased since in contrast to the phasing regulator where the maximum power will not increase the quadrature bo booster increases the magnitude of the effect of sending in voltage it also increases the sending in voltage magnitude it is because of that this maximum power increases in contrast to the previously investigated reactive shunt in series compensation scheme the phase angle regulators generally have to handle both real and reactive powers so the total va output of the angle regulator we would as the voltage source is equal to that is va will be equal to v sigma minus v s into i that is v sigma into i or magnitude of v sigma into magnitude of i that is actually the voltage and the current reading of the phase angle regulator that is this current multiplied by this voltage and this voltage will be the maximum voltage that it can supply 
and this current will be the exit rating of this phasing integrator. So, uh, in writing the rating of the angular equilibrium is determined by the product of maximum injective voltage and a maximum continuous line. So, this was about the phasing regulator. Let us let us now try to understand the transient stability that may be improved by using phasing regulators. So, this is the uncompensated system where this is the area one of the uh, we can say P delta curve. We see that the fault occurs at delta one and it is clear at delta two. So, this will be the area one which is used to uh, accelerate the rotor. Now, when the fault is clear, electrical power will be back to the system. So this this delta will sweep the area in such a way so that this area will be equal to area two so we have discussed this a lot of times because we have to use the equal area criteria here the more the area in this p delta curve the more the stability of the curve so this is the curve of the uncompensated system and we know that this is the curve for the compensated system you can see this much will be the area that will be covered and this area will be definitely same as this area this area this area but it will be covered before this delta 3 will be definitely this delta 3 delta a3 will be definitely less than this delta 3 that means it will have no more area to cover or more area available for swinging or you can see it will be more uh, stable in transient nature as computer and common system so we can say that transient stability have been improved by using the phasing regulators as well so I will stop over here. I think this will be enough for today. Thank you.